Welcome to episode 79 and this may be my final episode for 2023. In today's episode, I'm going to deal with the principles of sentencing in criminal proceedings. I alluded to this episode when I did episode 77. But before I do my usual disclaimer, this is not legal advice, should not be construed as such. For legal advice, please contact an attorney of your choice. Further, I would like to thank everyone who have followed me during the year 2023, who have subscribed, who have met me in the, the streets and comment or uh, express goodwill towards the the channel. Most of all, I would like to give a special shout out to my wife, who is my biggest supporter and who from time to time would remind me that it's time for another episode because you know on youtube consistency plays a big factor so thanks to everyone especially to my wife i'll be back to discuss the topic shortly welcome back Sentencing in criminal proceedings is not an exact science. Many jurisdictions throughout the world have set out sentencing guidelines based on a broad overview of their social and cultural situations to guide the sentencing court to arrive at a just sentence taking into consideration the peculiar characteristics of the person who falls to the sentence, the gravity of the crime, and the impact on the victim and society as a whole. In the Turks and Caicos Islands, there are no such guidelines. So judges in our jurisdiction rely on guidelines from England and Wales, regional guidelines, and past sentencing precedents in this jurisdiction. Almost 50 years ago, in the case of Regina and Sargent of 1974. Lawton LJ reminded the judges of the classical principles of sentencing when he said, and I quote, what are the proper penalty to be? We have thought it necessary not only to analyze the facts but to apply to those facts the classic principles of sentencing. Those classic principles are summed up in four words. Retribution, deterrence, prevention, and rehabilitation. Any judge who comes to sentence ought always to have those four classical principles in mind and to apply them. Let's look at the facts briefly in the case of Sergeant. Here was a 26 year old man who was sentenced to two years imprisonment and a guilty plea for the offense of Afro. The sentencing court failed to analyze the case 
by giving due weight or due regard to the classical principles of sentencing and the court of appeal held that his antecedents was not as bad as it was made out to be and thus reduced the sentence. So now let's look at these principles as set out by Lord Justice Lawton. First, we look at deterrence. What does this entail? Deterrence comes in two forms. Specific deterrence, which is concerned with punishing the individual offender in the expectation that he will not offend again. And a more general deterrence, which is related to the possibility that in general, people will be deterred from committing crime by the threat of punishment if they are caught. And this is affected by prison sentences, sometimes long prison sentences or heavy fights. Rehabilitation. This involves offering an offender help to overcome problems which he or she faces, thereby attempting to make it easier for him and her to avoid offending or reoffending in the future. This can include various types of assistance provided in the prison itself if the person is sentenced to prison sentence. It could be a probation order which is intended to help the offender to improve their social skills to integrate effectively into mainstream society to enhance their employment prospects or even to overcome a specific addiction, maybe a drug addiction, etc. And this could be affected through a suspended sentence or conditional or unconditional discharge, a community service order, a probation order, or a combination of orders which will be managed by the probation services. Then we come to the third principle, which is prevention. Today it is now classified as protection of the public or protection of society. Protection of the public or of society is one of the major justifications claimed for punishment in criminal proceedings. For example, imprisonment leads to the incapacitation of offenders so that they are prevented, at least temporarily, from offending against the public at large. This may be affected by long prison sentences or whole life prison sentences. So a person may be sentenced to life if he is deemed to be a menace to society. Or more moderate methods may be electronic tagging, coffee orders, etc. And we come to the four and final principle that of retribution and this principle rests on the notion that if a person knowingly or willfully or recklessly violate the law he or she deserves to be punished to the maximum effect of the law this principle resonates around ensuring that convicted persons receive their just punishment for their actions and this is affected by long and harsh prison sentences 
heavy fines or both fines and sentences. The effectiveness of retribution is that it satisfies the requirement that where the law provides a penalty for breaching that specific law, the penalty must be imposed rigidly when the law is broken. In other words, the court should have no mercy on an offender who willfully and recklessly have little or no regard for the law. Of course, this is tempered by specific sentencing guidelines and is further purchased by the sentencing court taking into regard the aims of sentencing and it would be only the worst of the worst offenders that would be sentenced to the most draconian penalties prescribed by the law. Here is where I will leave this episode for today. I thank you for watching. If you have learned anything from this episode, please leave a comment, like, share, and give this episode a thumbs up. Bye. See you in my next episode.